Chad Daybell's daughter, Emma, took the stand in his trial. And some of the things that she had to say really were eye-opening as to how the family operates, what the thought processes are, what their belief systems are. And we're gonna talk about some of the highlights of it in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. Sofa's back here. Roscoe's sleeping on it. We just transferred him from the roll sofa to the prop sofa, if you will. And my name's Paul, and I'm sitting in front of the prop sofa, but was also just on the real sofa a minute ago. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be reviewing more of the Chad D. Bell trial that is currently, when I say currently, it is May 22nd today. So uh, the family members of Chad have been testifying the last couple of days. So I've been going back over, looking at it, you know, doing all, doing what I do over here at the sofa. So today specifically, we're going to be focusing on Emma's testimony now so many of you were hitting me up like paul talk go look at this talk about it and i see why okay and what i want to do is today i want to do emma's tomorrow's garths and for various reasons number one because emma was on the stand longer some of the stuff that she had to say just had me like what but really both of them together had me kind of going whoa okay i have a whole not a whole new perspective but it's eye-opening like i said in the beginning so what we're gonna do if you're new to the channel to all these videos is we are going to look at some clips i would call them highlights but they're just parts of the the trial the testimony that i have pulled out to use as talking points and that's it so i'll put them up we'll talk about them and we'll kind of round it out at the end of the video so that's it now one thing i want you to keep in mind is we're going to be jumping around kind of during the the testimony of this so we're going to be beginning with some redirect and then we'll go back to the original and that kind of a thing so just keep that in mind it's not really necessarily in any type of order that we're going to be going in here on direct examination from the defense mr Pryor, if you'd like to continue you may I uh, just want to uh, advise you that you can't tell me what someone said and repeat what someone said, but you can answer my questions without telling me what the person actually said to you. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. So it's your understanding that at the Knott's Berry Farm trip, Lori Vallow came from another direction. Is that correct? Yes. She didn't participate in the travel plans with you uh, to California. Is that correct? Yes. At any time, without telling me what she said, was the topic of uh, the location of the children discussed with her? Yes. Okay. At any time, did you and your father ever discuss his knowledge of where the children might be? Yes. Okay. What do you understand your father's knowledge of where the children were located during the time that investigators were looking for them? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay. Overruled. Go ahead. I, from my understanding, I, and from, uh, I was told that the children were in a safe place. Okay. And was that understanding through your discussions with your dad? Yes. At any time, did your dad actually know where that safe place was with your discussions? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay. The only way she'd know this is based on hearsay and calls for speculation. Sustained. Okay. Okay, so we're starting off hot with that one, okay? <laughs> one thing that really stood out to me during this, a couple of things, and I'll go ahead and say this for people that are new here. I'm not a body language expert. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a police officer. I'm not an investigator. I'm not any of those fancy things that you see the other channels do and whatnot. I, I just got a sofa and a dog and some opinions, okay? So they're just that. My opinions, they don't mean anything, right? Um, one thing that immediately sticks out to me is just number one, her, I say this word wrong, Cadus, Cadus how her demeanor, um, the flat affect, you know, the yes, yes. Now, again, it works. She's on the stand, right? Uh, but there's just nothing there, right? Uh, now, granted, she'd be nervous. She's gone through a lot. I get that. But the whole thing that essentially this all wraps around to, you know, remember, they're standing by Chad, right? Um, how one could look at the evidence and 
stand by him is surprising to me but i also take into account that this is his daughter and you know tomorrow's video whatever his son i get that right so here you can kind of see the narrative that they're going with okay of well you know did what, what about what did lori say well, what about this what about that also the whole fact that lori's even in the picture and that this wasn't like red flag alarm bells 101 as we get more into the specific testimony about tammy it just makes my heart break for her even more because I just feel like, you know, did anyone, you know, care? <laughs> you know, and I don't know if care is the right word for it. Um, but I felt so bad for her to just hear people get on the stand and just so kind of nonchalantly talk and excuse away what took place to her. You know, and again, at the very beginning of this case, when this was all popping off, yeah, that's what everybody was told. The children are in a safe place. The children are in a safe place. I don't care how you paint the picture, how you stroke the brush, all those little analogies. The children were found in Chad's backyard. If you look at the videotape, we've already covered it. He is not surprised at this. Nothing. And even in that video where Emma's like being more like, you know, what about this? She's kind of explaining, you know, already just siding with that, but the proof is in the pudding. He was not surprised about this because he, in my opinion, put the, the children there. Okay, so let's go on to the next clip. The outdoors and your mother's participation in the outdoor activities around the property. Can you elaborate a little bit about what your mother's primary interest and role was in terms of the outdoors? She loved to nurture things, so taking care of animals and gardening and growing plants. She really wanted to have a strawberry patch and raspberries. She liked uh, cute little critters like ducks and chickens and rabbits, and she would take care of them. Now, in terms of uh, managing the pet cemetery, was that your father's role or your mother's role to manage that? My mother's. Okay, and, and she was the one primarily responsible? Yes. So your father didn't necessarily go there and, and, and participate in anything with the, the pet cemetery. Would that be fair? Yes, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Honestly, from the sounds of it, Chad didn't do much of anything around there, right? Tammy did most of it, okay? From working to the pet cemetery to this, to that. I'm just going to have to say this and take it for what it is. I question the validity of a lot of the statements that we will hear on the stand coming from Emma and Garth. So... I feel like everything is painted to put Chad in the best light. Now, having said that, I understand if this is a scenario, you've lost your mother. Whether you believe, whatever you believe, doesn't matter. She's gone, right? You are left with your father who is incarcerated, who probably you know, isn't coming back out, right? I mean, let's just say that. At this point in time, there's not been a verdict. There's not been sentencing. You are then stuck with the thought, the concept of if I go against him, I mean that. What do you do with that, right? Or if I stand, you know, if I stand by him, especially if said person is saying I'm innocent, I didn't do this, I didn't know about it, this, that, the other, whatever he's saying, you know, behind closed doors. So it's it puts the family members and other people in this very odd predicament, right? And so I feel like some of that's going on here, but I feel like also there's kind of like blinders being put on. Also the tidbits you learn about Tammy through this are just that, where I'm like, she was doing so much around this property. So, I mean, she was a nurturer, she was a carer, right? So she might've had like a different belief system than me, but at the end of the day, I mean, to me, that's what makes the world go round, right? To each their own, uh, as long as it doesn't harm anybody. And that's what I have issues with, with Chad and Lori, is that their belief system harmed and took the lives of others. You know, so you listen to Tammy. I also believe that as we get into this more and some of the stuff that we've heard and learned so far, I feel like some of the stuff she might have just gone along with to keep the peace. You know what I mean? You'd be like, what's Chad up to? Okay, yep, that's what we're doing today that kind of thing. And so one thing when Lori came by and she's just like, oh, Chad, I really believe your light and dark point system. I 100%, you are just the king. You know, he was enamored by that because he probably wasn't 100% getting that from Tammy. You know, there's already the mention of being like, oh, Tammy, 
Tammy just rolled her eyes. You know, that kind of a thing, whereas Lori was just like doting on him. She knew how to gas him up. So I, I find that interesting and I find it heartbreaking to learn these little details. Not, not in a sad way, they're good details, but the thing about the, the strawberries and the ducks and stuff like that, it's just like, my God, it's so sad. This woman lost her life in the way that she did. And that I'm sitting here listening to the family get up here and excuse it away like it was natural or something. I don't know. Let's keep going. At the time when your father was uh, accused of this, are you aware of whether or not your father owned a dog? Uh, my father did not own a dog. He does not like dogs. So there was no dog on the property at that, that point. Is that correct? Uh, correct. That they owned? Oh, that they owned, yes. Wow. Blasphemy. Roscoe, it's okay, honey. It's okay. I knew I didn't like him. And now I double don't like him. Doesn't like dog. Tells me all I need to know right there. Let's keep going. We were in a section of the gym with lightweight dumbbells. And Detective Hermosillo came and started exercising near us. And it seemed like a part of the gym that would have been too easy for him. And he stood closer to us than felt Objection, Your Honor. This is calling for speculation. Judge, he's, she's describing an event, not describing, a, speculating about anything. It's overruled. Go ahead. He was standing closer to us than felt comfortable, and it felt like he was trying to listen in on our conversation. Were there other occasions, either at church or otherwise, where you felt that people were, uh, were maybe judging you? Yes. Give me an example. I had a... a Detective from Madison County confront me in the hallway at church. Okay. And was that an uncomfortable situation? It was really uncomfortable, and I haven't attended that congregation since. I mean, honestly, girl, I would have left town, like, immediately, okay? Have to, you felt judged. Yeah. When was the last time? Like, five minutes ago, walking in here? Okay, I get its core, and I'm being like, you know, pet, when I said petty when I say this. Of course you're going to be, I mean, look at what your father has allegedly done and the whole circus around it. Children in the backyard, this, that, and the other. Not to mention some of the stuff that they've pulled themselves with the pictures and the four-wheelers and the backyard and all the, I mean, yeah, you're going to get judged, right? Now, here's the thing. So in the beginning when she was like, we'll, we'll see this pattern with a questioning with Emma and Garth about, you know, the evil, oh, you know, police officers, Detective Hermosillo. You know, he went to the easy part of the gym, you know, and was listening in on us. Here's my thing. I'm like, yeah, it's almost as if he's trying to get answers as to why there's children buried in your backyard, you know, and Tammy's gone and Charles is gone and did, 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 and Lori's missing and blah, 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 you know, everything, right? Shame on him, I guess. You know, this is where it starts to get creepy, bone chilling, creepy, where you're like, whoa, this is just like somebody repeating these, like, yes, Detective Hermosia got up here and he made me feel uncomfortable. It was like he was trying to listen in on me. Now, granted, I do think it's probably pretty obvious for it's just like, okay, yeah, he's at the gym and like going to like the lightweight. I mean, he's a big dude, right? I get it. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, dude, go a little bit more undercover, but he's probably trying to get answers. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, go for it, dude. You know, so this part right here does not surprise me at all. I would have more empathy toward it, towards it. If there wasn't this vibe, and I'm sure if we're, if I'm picking up on the I've, comment sections, all this kind of stuff of like, just the questioning of the truth of these statements, that kind of a thing, you know, is somebody covering up for them? Are they trying to help somebody get out of this? You know, that type that type energy and I'm not saying she had she was involved or anything like that but it's just always a hard pill to swallow um when you, we feel like the evidence says this right here and then you hear somebody kind of just gassing their person up whether it's their father their spouse whatever like they wouldn't have done that and you know this and the other it just is you know, now that being said you know these are young people and everybody processes trauma differently right and so I would imagine that on the journey whatever happens with this that will be a lifelong process that's part of the victimization of these crimes where they not only affect obviously the people whose lives they take and the immediate loved ones but then also all these other outlying victims if you go back and if you follow me you're like oh my god he's talking about this case again 
You already know it though, the staircase, okay? And look at that dynamic, the dichotomy of that. Here's Michael Peterson, he, something happens to Kathleen, you know, at this point, it's allegedly, he's he's free, not to be charged again, I guess, but it splits this mixed blended family up with her biological daughter finally, at first sticking up for him, seeing the evidence, and then being like, no, he totally did this to my mother, and splitting ways with him. His kid's sticking by him, but then as you could, if you follow it over the years, there's a little bit of this wavering, like, well, whatever dad did, you know, we're not really sure what happened that night, kind of an energy. You know, people grow, people change, and I feel like that's might happen here. I can't imagine what it would be like to have to digest did my father possibly do this to all these people, including my mother? That would be a lot, right? That would be incredibly traumatizing. So I, I give them that. But the almost like just the disdain towards police, and it also kind of informs me a little bit that I feel like the belief system, even though both Garth and uh, Emma will get up here and say, Chad's more traditionalist, Chad's more this, I feel like they were all kind of in on this, like Chad's the all-knowing. Chad's this because he was the male of the family and this is highly regarded, even though he's a doofus, right? It's just like simply because he's the male, he knows best, you know, gotta go by what he says. And if that's how your household runs, that's how your household runs, like to each their own, right? Whatever you do behind closed doors, whatever you do, okay? Uh, whatever, who cares, you know, but when people start losing their lives and things of this nature, then that's when we start caring. That's when it affects other people, obviously. Okay, let's go to that next clip. On the day of your um, mother's funeral, how would you describe your father's reaction? Typical for any grieving Latter-day Saint husband. Does that mean? He cried. He also seemed happy at moments. And when you say typical, what do you mean? Is that is that typical? Latter-day Saints believe that we will be resurrected and be with our families forever. So a funeral isn't saying goodbye forever. It's a see you later. It's a break. And I get that. And I understand that. And this is where we need some of our uh, LDS friends in the comment section to inform us or former LDS, whatever. Um, here's my thing. You know, I'm not of that religion, so I'm not sure. Uh, I've learned a lot about it, I'm not trying to align Chad's beliefs with this at all. I realize that this is completely, I consider Chad and then like this stuff completely separate, even though I don't know about the religions and I've learned enough about it from people in the comments and talking on live chats, you know, talking about this, they're like, this is over here. This is not what we think over there. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of those where I'm like, look, I get anyone can apply this. Like when death occurs, oftentimes it's obviously very sad. You've lost a loved one, but there's also a level of being like, they're on, especially if they had some like tumultuous, say, year long battling some kind of something or whatever. It's like they're in a better place type thing, okay, is what I'm getting at. <clears throat> Where I draw the line with, you know, going from happiness to sadness is I'm like, is it normal to be doing cartwheels through the service? You're so damn excited about it. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not trying to say that he actually did cartwheels, but I mean, enough people were like yeah there was something off with this okay you know so that's where i question the behavior right but again i don't know and i wasn't personally there so i'm just giving opinions from the sofa you know it doesn't uh, who am i you know what i mean but again this is what i'm talking about which is like this typical of lds you know it's monday morning yep they're good for between happy it's a celebration you're getting ready to see your person you know till later type situation i'm like well that could be said for a lot of people but there's also time and place you know also we now know that he's got another woman on the side already even before this is that typical <laughs> you know what i mean like because there's that level of excitement of he gets to be with his woman now now we'll get into when we get to, especially Garth's, uh, um, not reenactment, but walking them through on the stand of how he found his mother and what went down there, you know, it's not pretty, okay? It's, it's not pretty at all. I mean, I would argue that Chad was very excited, and not because he was going to see Tammy later on, but because he had his side piece getting ready to move up to front and center. You've been talking with your dad almost daily over the last several years, correct? Yes. Lots of conversations with your dad? Yes. Do you recall your dad in early June of 2020 telling you not to cooperate with law enforcement? I don't remember him saying that. 
You don't remember a phone call in which he relayed to you probably better if you just don't cooperate? I don't remember that. Now, Emma's very good at not remembering. This is a very fun phase of her phrase of hers on the stand. Now, if you do go back to that video of him being arrested on the day this went down and he's in the back of the squad car and he does make that statement. Now, again, I believe these are two different things they're talking about, though. Uh, well, just kind of almost like saying, do what you want to do. You know, he wasn't saying cooperate with them. Do this. It was, well, as much as you feel like you want to. All the while... You know, acting like, I didn't know there was that back there. I, what, there's children, huh? Because remember, when they're like, well, they found kids back there, whatever. Huh. Okay, yeah, okay. You know, I, I guess my question with her is like, do you not have that spidey sense that tells you like, you know, he, this was not a surprise to him? Like, he, he was aware of this? That's the part that surprises me with her. Do you remember then telling the FBI you were not going to meet with them anymore? I chose not to do that because of counsel from another attorney. But it was after having that conversation with your dad, correct? No. Was it after June 9th of 2020 that you told him that? Yes. After June 10th of 2020 that you told him that? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. You see how she makes them get real technical? So, no, it wasn't after that. Oh, it wasn't? Okay, was it after this? Yeah. Was it after this? I don't remember girl. Mm -mm. I'm glad for this. Chad's witnesses, honey, honey, they ain't, they ain't doing him no favors. Okay. Numerous things in this case ain't done him a no favors, right? When you get up here and start trying to act shady and like attitude -y and stuff like that, it, it's not a good look. Not when you're trying to testify for the man that, you know, had children buried in his backyard, right? This is not good at all. Do you recall your dad talking to you about the one that exercised with you at Zumba? that Tammy wasn't able to keep up. She would just make up her own moves. Do you recall your dad telling you that? No. But you've had a lot of visits with your dad. Yes. So it may be hard to remember everything he's told you. He's never told me to say anything. So you don't recall him telling you those things? No. There's just something. So no, I don't remember that. He never told me to say any of those things. Here's the thing, too, that they're going to try and really pivot is like this. Oh, she was so weak. Oh, she was this. Oh, she was that. Oh, she had to carry a box. She could barely do it. We didn't help, though. We just watched her do it. You know, and I'm just like, y'all, I mean, a normal, healthy person, that could be an issue. Especially as you get a little bit older, it doesn't mean you're going to die, right? I mean, I've got arthritis in different parts of my body. There's times where it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my shoulder today was like being weird. You know, I'm almost 50. I mean, this is just what happens, right? And so they're trying, this is the vibe it gives, okay? It gives, Chad has been gassing them up and being like this. Like, pretend like Tammy, like, I'm making this scenario up. They're sitting inside and Tammy comes in, like, from doing something. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to go take a shower. Chad would be like this to the kid. You hear how she's breathing? She's getting weaker. She's getting weaker. I consulted the veil. It's not good. She's going to be leaving us, and you need to prepare for that. That kind of thing right there, gassing them up, and it, clearly they believe anything this man says, right? I mean, this man has got a chokehold on this damn town, or he did at least. <clears throat> you know, people just being like, oh, no, he's the one. You go to him. He's got that magic eight ball thing that you shake up. He's got the mood ring. Oh, girl, he's got a, a direct connection to the damn veil, okay? He gets to shaking that little eight ball. Honey, he's predicted hurricanes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, and so that's the whole thing where I'm just like, you know, and again, I get because this is different. It's the father, right? It's I, I, There's a whole other layer to it with that because he's had children, his children, under his care to be brought up into these kind of like, you know, very fringe belief systems. And if he's been sitting here gassing them up for a while about Tammy's health and all those things, they might not even be aware that he was doing. They're predisposed to it is what I'm getting at. So that's it. Let's keep going. You talked about you were worried about your mom's health. Yes. But your mom went to a doctor, right? She'd been there for a wrist recently? Just for the wrist. Surprised you to learn that no mention of current anemia in her medical records? Because she hadn't been to the doctor since 2017. 
When did your mom go to the doctor for a wrist? In 2019. That's okay. a two-year gap. You just answer the question. So when did your mom go for her wrist? In 2019. Okay. Her medical records say nothing about current anemia. Does that surprise you? Yes. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You hear Emma, and after, when I got to this part, I was like, it's like they don't want to look at any other thing. It's like they made their mind up, like, no, this is what happened. This is what happened. We've got blinders on it. We're not going to look at any other thing. And it's like, well, she didn't go to the doctor for that, which I understand that to great, like, right? Like, you can be going to the doctor and just think about how does it go to the doctor, for, not for a physical, like a specific thing, right? So you can be going up in there, but have something else going on. I get that, okay? But what they're getting at is there's things, even when you go get certain stuff done, you're going to have signs of like, well, hold on, we need to look into this. Are you been feeling this way or what? Just the fact that you're going to the doctor. Well, there's there's a two-year gap. I love that one. She was like, just answer the question. You know, because this right here to me is like, why are you so pressed to not look at other options with this? It's like they have this immediate hatred towards the state and all this. Like, and almost honestly, they're brainwashed against the state and all them. I understand they're trying to put her father away. I get that. But I guess my whole thing is like, are you not even willing to potentially look at the evidence and consider for a moment, huh? This is the, my reality that I knew as reality, not reality. Should I question that? Should I question this man that I call father? Should I question it? You know, it's like you have to be willing, especially in this kind of scenario, to consider that. So surprise you to learn that on October 18th, there was activity on her phone at 1022 p.m.? No. That's a lot later than seven. She had been sick that night. I stay up later when I'm sick and I've just thrown up as well. Were you there that night? No. Did you see her throw up? No. So you don't know? Nope. You only know what you were told? Yes. But at least even with that, like, nope, nope. That's the thing that they're not considering. It's like, you weren't there to see these things. You're going based on what you're telling and your answers are saying you still believe what your father says silencing and we're way past the point of needing to question that again i'll say it a million times in this video i understand it's her father that's a whole other layer when you're going through especially when you're young and oftentimes it takes a while for that level in life to hit of oh my parents are human they have their own failings their own things they're they don't know everything. You know what I'm saying? Like that transition. And it seems like his kids haven't made that transition. It's still, no, dad said that's what happened. That's what happened. And it's like, but he also has two children buried in his backyard. Uh, well, he, he said he didn't do that. What are you talking about? You know, that's what it's like. I mean, almost it has this, and I'm not trying to say, oh, they're in it. They covered it up. They did this. But I can see why the cops were all over them because there's this vibe of like, whether they know it or not, it seems like they're being subversive. I don't know if that's the right word I'm looking for. You know, like you question the motivation and how much they know about in regards of like, if they're being upfront about their interpretations of what they saw, if that makes sense. Let's keep going. You were asked about this book fair. You talked about your mom carrying a heavy box. Do you recall that? Yes. But your mom was carrying the box, right? Yes. So she was able to carry a box. Barely. But she was doing it. Correct? Yes. And they make excuses. Barely. It's like they, it's like they've decided collectively, we don't care what the truth is. We are not going to let dad go to prison for this. That's what I feel like. We're going to see what needs to be said. She was barely carrying it. I can't she's carrying it. It's like, here's my thing. There's a huge, when you're trying to tell me that somebody dropped dad during the middle of the night, Okay, honey, there's a way big difference in their actions and stuff like that. People don't just drop to the floor frozen and cold. This is not how this works, okay? I mean, in these very rare circumstances, but n certainly not in this, okay? Now, again, I'm no professional. I am none of that, but I just have, you know, what I like to say, common sense. You know, there's kids in the backyard. Now, especially after this, seeing all of this, they know about Charles. They know about Brandon. They know about uh, their mom, obviously, the kids. 
there's a pattern, you know, and that's where I'm just like, okay, you know, you're going to have to kind of come to that realization, you know, quit running to your father who is just, I get he's your father, but you can sit here. It's almost like this where you can sit here and start to look at the other option of maybe dad did this. Maybe there's another side to dad. That doesn't mean that we we know this part of him over here and we love this part of him. That's our father. This is how we know him. That doesn't change. But now there's this component that we don't agree with, that we don't love, that we don't like, that we question, that we want to know about. And I think that's almost a direction you would have to go in this. Now, again, like if you were like the child or a spouse or really mostly the child, right? Because if you go back to some of these like uh, interviews where people have come out and they find out years later that their father was, I mean, sometimes a mother, but I mostly know of like ones that are fathers, um, like this notorious serial, you know what? And they're like, dad you know, brought me toys. He was a loving, doting father. I didn't know he did like I had no idea, you know, and now this is kind of like, oh my gosh, the guilt, you know, all these things that this conjures up, the questions, you know, my God, he took someone else's mother, but here I am, almost like you would have survivor's guilt in a way. So that being said, I, I almost feel like that's going to have to take place at some point here because it's almost like Chad's still controlling the narrative. They're talking every day while he's incarcerated. So it's almost like he's still keeping that going. And it's just clear in these deadpan, yes, no, just, you know, blindly following him still. Did you have a chance to look that over? Yes. Do you see on the back page whose signatures were there? Yes. And whose are those? It says employee signature, Tamara M. Daybell. Spouse's signature of applying for coverage, Chad G. Daybell. And do you see dates by those? Uh, 9 8 19. Is it the same date on both signatures? Yes. And can you see that that's only insurance for your mother? Yes. Uh, she didn't want to admit that. They're talking about the insurance policy. Anything that would paint Chad in any kind of a guilty light, she will try and get away from. And then when the evidence is brought forth, it's this begrudgingly going, like, yes, yes. We see the pattern. This is what they were doing with everybody. They were hiking the insurance things up. They were making, this was how they were financing their loin fire escapades, I guess. I mean, I don't even think that they believed that they were going to run the world with their 144. I think it was literally just nothing but one long loin fire binge. God help us. Let's go to the next clip. And you were asked about whether or not your mom was familiar with paintball guns. Do you recall that? Yes. And who is Garth Daybell? Garth is my older brother. Would it surprise you to learn or to hear Garth say that she wasn't familiar with paintball guns? I don't think he said that. Would it surprise you if he did? Yeah, that would surprise me. Well, here's the thing. It should surprise her. There's a lot of it. I don't think he said that. Bad, the, contradicting testimony. She seems more like she's going to double down on something than Garth. You know what I'm saying? I've had to compare the two. Um But so many of these statements came up during this. Like, would it surprise you if this? Yeah, it, it, that would. Or I didn't say that. Are you sure? You know, kind of a thing. You can see why the grand jury came back with like with them talking about like perjury and this that, and the other. Okay. Um, I mean, you see it just playing out in the stand. Like they had this disdain towards the state. Again, I get it. They're trying to put his father, father away. Of course, you're going to be a little bit leery of that. Did you ever ask your dad where JJ Vallow was? Yes. What did he tell you? He told me that he was in a safe place. Did you ever ask your dad where Tylee Ryan was? Yes. What did he tell you? In a safe place. Do you know where JJ and Tylee were found? Yes. Where? In the backyard. Of whose property? Of my dad's property. I mean, same thing with Garth. Same thing with the general public. They're safe. We're hiding them from the evil gay and Larry. You know, this is what was told to us in the beginning, right? Remember, they're telling everybody different stories. You know, they're telling the cops this, Melanie Gibb this, the public this, and they eat that, this, that, you name it. Everybody got a different story. They're in a safe place. No, they're not. Okay. And I guess... <sighs> I, I, this is the part where I'm like, I, 
I'm trying to make it, I, I'm, I'm trying to get there from A to B with you, how the cognitive dissonance on this one, because it's, it's a lot of how we go from there to there. You know, you were there when they found these, you saw the reaction, but again, she's been on the phone with Chad every day, talking to Lori, you know, they're listening to this. Like she probably could have been like, I'm gonna use the word converted, I don't know. Now they will say that they basically have different, you know, beliefs and whatnot than Chad does and everything, you know, which is good. Um, but yeah, yeah, this part, it's just, I, I don't understand this part at all. We talked about your dad, some of the things that he would teach you, including light and dark, do you recall that? Yes. Have you tried to discern light and dark? Yes. Did your dad ever teach you about zombies? No. Did he ever teach you about castings? Yes. And I think you talked about your mom doing something like that. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Would you would you qualify that as a casting? Um, what my mother would do? Yes. Yes. Now, here's one thing that I learned, for me at least, you know, some of you who have followed this extremely closely might know this, and I'm just going to give my two cents on it, because that's kind of what I do. Okay, so one thing in listening to both Garth and, uh, and her was kind of learning that it sounds like Tammy was a little bit more, and I, I'm going to use the word involved, or of the belief system of Chad. The castings, and this, and that, and blah, 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 and the light, and the dark, and that, you know. Now, also on that same note, so I'm like, oh, okay, I thought, I didn't think she was all up in it in that way, just to put it, you know, quite frank. Now, here's the other part to it. We've heard the other stuff, and I mentioned this earlier, where Chad's like, yeah, she would just roll her eyes, she would just do this, and then she would eventually come around. She'd pray on it and then come around. I think some of it, For we've seen Chad, we've heard this. Imagine being married to that man for that long. You would get to a certain point where, you know, you've got kids, you've got a house, you've got this, you're trying to put damn food on the table, you've got a damn Chad. At a certain point, you're gonna be like, what are we doing today? Light, dark, okay, sure. Yeah, there are five. Okay, what else? You, did you did you get the groceries? You know, kind of a thing. Yeah, Is the grocery store okay to go to or is it dark now? Is it a level 10? Can we not go there now? Uh, you know, so I, I feel like at a certain point, she's probably pandering and she might have these beliefs too or whatever. That being said, Tammy does not strike me as the type of person that would ever take this to the level of taking lives of other people, you know, or using it to do the things that Chad and Lori did, right? And again, to each their own. If you want to do whatever you want to do on your own time, and it's not harming anybody else, that's my thing. If what you're doing wants to harm yourself, hey, stay on your own porch with that. You know what I'm saying? go for it. Ain't none of my business. But once it starts harming other people, that's where it gets to be a different story. So obviously a case and example, Chad and Lori, you know, they're going off this crazy belief system and it's harming other people. I do not think that Tammy sounded like the type of person that would have ever gone down that path, even under the influence of Chad, right? Sounds to me like she just probably pandered with him and dabbled in this and that a little bit. Like, okay, I can align with this. Like, we're cool with this, but not, maybe not this type thing. And then uh, what's her name? Lori comes around, and like I said earlier, and it's just like, oh my gosh. You're just so wonderful. We could talk or not talk for hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to end up using that in every damn video now. But you know what I mean? Like, that's just the energy I get. So even though it's new to me to be like, oh, okay, so Tammy was a little bit more involved in this belief system, it sounds like. I just don't think it's the same thing as like Chad and Lori or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination. Well, my mom was one of the people... But it was not death so much as how connected your spirit was to your body. My mom would feel lightheaded and say she didn't feel quite connected to herself. And they would reconnect her spirit to her body. Again, to each their own. You know, I think, I can't remember if it's her or Garth that mentions about the mother having like these kind of fainting things when she would be kneeling. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, I get those too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, what are we talking about here? I, again, throughout all of this, I just get this vibe like they're repeating information told to them by Chad, who was gassing the situation up for a while to pivot it to be not a surprise when Tammy passed away out of the blue. I want to talk a little bit about your mother's health. What can you tell me in general about your mother's health in the last uh, year or so? 
her health started declining. I was really worried about it. She, um, well, she'd always been one to, to be able to meet the demands of daily life without being exhausted. And she started going to bed at like before dinner some nights, it would be like five, six, seven o'clock at night. And she would sleep in too, if given the opportunity. So suddenly needing to sleep a lot was very confusing. She probably was depressed. Imagine your reality being Chad Daybell and his little tangents that he's running off on while you're trying to pay bills, work, do this, do that. He's over here talking about, I've written another book. This is going to be the one. I can feel it in my veil. You know, imagine dealing with that. There would have to be this underlying level of depression that would just run all over you. In the beginning where she was like, you know, again, I don't know her, so this might just be how she talked. She was like, I was really worried for her, actually. She didn't, they, this is the thing. Her and Garth both talk like Chad. It's just hers is like the female version of it. I want to talk a little bit about the book fair on the 18th and the preparations that were involved. Did you personally observe anything uh, as far as your mother preparing for the book fair? She loaded her personal belongings in boxes and loaded them heavier than perhaps she should have because I observed her walking down the hallway and uh, she was resting the box against her body um, on her arms, holding it holding it back and walking with a lot of effort. I was in a meeting and I actually stepped out to help her because it was way too heavy for her. It, that doesn't strike me as odd though. They're trying to use this example of see, that's it right there. That's, you could tell she was declining. What if the box was just too heavy and she shouldn't have been carrying it? You know, that would be completely normal. You don't have to be dying to fit that bill. The way they describe it, I'm like, she shouldn't have been able to, like, if this is all legit, like, if she just passed out, she'd been suffering from whatever, number one, you would have think they would have found it. But number two, also, it would have been, she wouldn't have been able to carry that box. There would be so many other things going on. And you're a participant, an active participant in your faith. Is that correct? Yes. How would you describe your father's faith? I, I would say very traditional in what he believed and he would research very carefully and he wanted to stick to as close as the original form as he could so he was really interested in teachings from joseph smith and brigham young and similar early leaders of the church would it be fair to describe your father as a fundamental uh yes okay now, this is something that I found interesting, and I wonder if it's true or if it's also a, what do you call it, like a tactic or whatever, is for both her and Garth to be like, no, dad is more fundamentalist. He's more literal. He's more this. We're more over here. We're not as strict, whatever. And so maybe that's true. I don't know. I don't know them, right? But I would think that by doing that, number one, it makes it give more sense to be like, oh, well, this is why Chad was the way he was. Like he thinks in these kind of old school ways, but that's normal because he's a fundamentalist. Okay. There's been some discussion about the idea of light and dark. Can you describe to me what you understand to be the 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 uh, um, concept of light and dark? Um, the phrase is good and evil would be talking about your actions, what you chose to do, where light and dark would be talking about your motivations. Light it means that you're acting selflessly like the Savior would be, and dark means that you're selfish, focusing inward like uh, Satan would be. Okay, was this something that your mother, from your discussions with your family shared with your father in terms of her beliefs? Yes. So would it be fair to say that your mother's beliefs, to your knowledge, were also of the fundamental or traditional node? Probably more so than him. Again, I don't know them. I don't know what to say to that. I don't even know if from what I've heard that Chad would be considered a fundamentalist. But again, like I've said, I'm not a religious expert. I'm not even of this religion. I'm just kind of going based on what I see and the evidence and the things that I'm seeing from other like creators and people in the comment section, people who you know, are of the faith, and they're like, uh, the, uh, you know, this is not, this is like a, 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 a twisted version of the, they've taken kernels of truth from the faith 
and completely twisted it is the general vibe I get. So that's why I kind of find it odd for her to sit up here. Oh, mom was even more so. You know, and I'm just like, that, I don't know. But again, I, I, I wasn't there, I can't say. But it something doesn't sit right about that statement with me. I have struggled with anxiety for years, and it was feeling very unmanageable. And I felt like there was a being that was with me. And I talked to my parents about it. And um, my dad cast it out using the power of the priesthood. And then I felt better afterwards. Okay. When you say the power of the priesthood, what do you mean by that? Um, the power of God given by the laying on of hands. Okay. Now, again, help me out in the comment section with this. Is that legit? Is that of the run-of-the-mill um, traditional LDS faith, what she's talking about? Or is this out there? You know, um, because hearing her talk about it, Knowing how much she's in touch with Chad, this and the other. Oh, I had a bean, you know, this and the other. They did a cast out. I felt better. Um, this is why I think that the cops were so coming down on them. And like, even with a little bit of a suspicious eye in the beginning is because it seems like everyone's kind of in on this. Everyone that's still living is kind of of the same belief that seems to have taken other people's lives, right? Now, I'm not trying to accuse them of having done this, but I can see where the cops would have been like, yeah, we want to get near her at the gym and see what she's talking about. Yeah, we don't want to let them out of our sight. Like, a very questionable nature. Some recovery as a result of that? I instantly felt better. I felt like the individual that was trying to affect my body was gone. Okay, and this is something that is not inconsistent with uh, the LDS teachings, light and dark and these sort of entities. Would that be fair? And all Christianity and the Bible, the Savior would cast spirits out of people. Okay. Again, I included that just for one more time. Please drop it in the comments section, uh, your personal experience, if you have one, if you're of the faith and whatnot, the validity of this. Um you know, and yes, I've looked at it. I, I said, well, Paul, Google it. Well, I've done that. Um, I I like hearing people's stories, their own experiences. To me, that paints a much clearer picture because everything, life is nuanced, right? And so that's where I'm like, I get give and take. Like there's this and that. And maybe this church over here practices this a little bit different than this over here. But it doesn't navigate me away from the fact that what Lori and Chad were doing seemed so outlandish and so outrageous that I question what the children are saying their belief systems are simply from the fact that Chad had access to their brains his whole life. And at this point, as a result of casting out the spirits, does that mean that after they cast the spirits out, you die? No. Is there any instant that you can recall in your teachings as part of the fundamental or LDS church where by casting out a spirit, the result is someone dies? No, the goal of it is so that way you have your own body back and can be in control of yourself. Okay. So then why is everybody dead around them that was deemed dark? Okay, this is my question. So, and the exasperated, no, this, no, that's not the point of it. Exactly. It's not. So why did it happen in this scenario? Everybody who is in their way ends up dead and deemed a dark spirit. And again, this is just more on that, like, you know, oh, our mission. Oh, we've got this and that and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the whole thing. But again, remember, and I'm kind of switching thoughts here. Remember during that police enter, not the police, I'm sorry, when Chad was in the back of the cop car, like the day he got arrested or whatever, and he's talking, oh, and I, she was talking about having spoken to Lori on the phone, like she was kind of the go-between. So there's been all this interaction going on here, you know, which is why I just question the answers and the validity. But your father enjoyed expressing his views about his religious theories, correct? Um, he enjoyed speaking in front of groups and teaching, but not necessarily talking one-on-one -on -one with many individuals. That would be very draining for him. But talking in front of a group and teaching had a different energy about it. Mm -hmm. Sure, Jan. From what I gather, he probably talks everybody's ear off. He thought he was a little Mr. You know, campaign trail president or something. You know, I just, I'm like, this is where I'm like, are you sure? Are we talking about the same man? Because the one that I'm familiar with loves to hear his own voice, okay? 
he didn't express any opinion. Okay. Did you express an opinion to Coroner Die about what your wishes were? I did. I did not want an autopsy. Did your father agree with you or disagree? Or did he, do you know what kind of a position he may or may not have taken at that point? He nodded. Okay. Of course he did. He seems to always go along with whatever somebody else is around. Like, remember even when she was at the car talking to him and she's talking to the cops and, oh, they found this over here. Mm, mm. Just non-committal, you know, whatever. Of course he's not going to say anything about the autopsy. You know, he doesn't want them to have one. You know, it's, it's interesting how he takes this passive role to things. And I don't know if it's to let other people catch the the brunt of trouble as much as it just seems to be a tactic tactic of his and how he operates and gets what he wants. It appeared to be genuine grief. Is there any doubt in your mind? No doubt at all. Okay. You understand that at the time he was involved in an affair with another woman, correct? Correct. But in spite of that, you still felt that he was genuinely grieved about your mother's death. But I know that the grief that he felt was real. He may not have had the same romantic relationship with my mother that he had in the past, but I know that he valued her as a person and seeing her die was very traumatic. Uh, again, so, I mean, that's it. That's all the clips I wanted to go over. Now, just, you know, going over the whole thing, again, the, my general synopsis on it, I feel like, obviously, she's sticking by her father. She wants him out. She's going to say what needs to be said. Uh, we're not going to question him. We're not going to question his truth. He is the end-all, be-all. If Dad said it went down this way, that's what we're going with. You know, and in fact, we're going to double, we're going to come back and treat them like the enemy, which is, that's the part that makes me think she's a little bit more in line with him and Lori's train of thought than other things because of this disdain towards them. Now, again, I understand they're trying to put her father away. She wouldn't want that. Nobody would. So it'd be a mixed bag of feelings. However, this in uh, testimony was very angering at times. It was very eye-opening. Um, I did not know to the level of you know, or to the degree that she was just really like down for her father, like, mm -mm. like, you know, this is this, it, it almost felt like at times where I was like, I mean, are we just, are we glad Tammy's gone? I mean, you know, nobody seems, it's like everybody seems way more concerned about the father, Chad, than they do Tammy. Yeah, because I feel like we would be on our way to looking at truth for justice, but if they're convinced that that has already happened and the dad's wrongfully confused and then you go down the line of the kids, oh, well, this, that, the other with that, you know, it's like a, there's an excuse for everything, you know, and it's very frustrating and it just feels like group think, you know, and so there's no telling who all is in her ear. So that being said, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Number one, if you have experience in the LDS faith and you're familiar with the customs, the belief systems, the parts where I was asking about that, drop it in the comments. Let me know. I'm dying to read the comment section of this uh, to get more information on how this plays out. I absolutely love that feature about YouTube, being able to put a video up and go back and read the comments. I might not be able to respond to them all, but I definitely go through and read and like see like, oh, okay, I didn't think about this or that or, you know, whatever. So anyways, that's it. I'll get off my soapbox. I do appreciate you still watching. If you are, Roscoe says, thank you. He is long asleep. It's actually getting warm in here because it's getting very hot outside. So, we might have to go take ourselves a little afternoon nap. But until we do that, Roscoe does ask that you drop some sofas off in the comment section. I promise we won't fall asleep on the sofa in the comment section. We will sit up, talk about this case, other ones, all the stuff we talk about here at the Sofa Squad. And until we meet up to do that, we'll see y'all soon. I just wanted to say thank you again for watching the whole video. And also thank you for being part of the Sofa Squad. Special thanks to all the Patreon members, channel members from both of my channels, everybody who likes, shares, subscribes, comments in the comment sections. It helps the channel out so much. Now, don't forget, I do have that other channel, the podcast channel. That's where we go live. We hang out. We talk. Uh, we have kind of sort of a schedule, but just be sure and check it out. I'll put it up here on the screen. Also, if you're looking for merch, be sure to check out my Teespring store. I'll put that up here. And then, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to follow me and Roscoe on the Insta, on the gram, on the Instagram, go on, check it out. It's right here on the screen again. But once again, thank you very much. I really appreciate you being part of the Sofa Squad, and I'll See you in the next video.